Whenever I'm making a single page app, a spa, I use Vite. And at the back of my brain, I always know at some point I'm going to need an API. And that API usually doesn't have cores, which means I'm going to either need to shift my code to next or make a local express server and have it in the same repo, and that's a hassle. Now, I've, I've tried some Vite plugins to give me access to the request, and yeah, I can make the API, but then my React app stops working, and it's just ah, frustrating. But now, there's Vinci. It's a new platform agnostic meta framework built on top of Vite and Nitro, where you can have one server where you can define the routes to go to React or Vue or Solid or whatever, the static asset routes, and also routes that are for APIs and have it all in one server. It's super cool. So we're going to use Vinci to build this cool photo viewer with a masonry layout. Let's dig into it. All right, I'm going to create a directory called Vinci Photos. And in there, I'm going to initialize PMPM. And I'm going to add Vinci. If you're wondering what that red section is about, that's about core pack. I moved from having PMPM or Yarn or NPM installed individually to core pack. I'll do a video on core pack at some point, but core pack is a really cool way of binding a package to a particular package manager. All right, let's bring this up in VS Code. Okay, it looks good. The first thing I'm going to do is actually bring in some photos. These are just photos of my dog, Murph. Cute little dog. And this, so I'm going to start off by like basically showing us how to add a server that manages static assets. So I've got this directory called photos. I want to show that. And I want to make that like the slash photos route on my server. Because when I use those then in the app. So I'm going to create a local file called app.config. Dot MJS, and this is going to be the Vinci configuration. And in there, I'm going to bring create app from Vinci and then give it my list of routers. So my list of routers basically says, for these routes, use this. And for these routes, use that. So in the case of these photos, it's going to be a type of static. So it's going to be a static asset directory in this case. The base is going to be slash photos. That's a base on the URL. The directory in this case is dot slash photos. And then you can give it a handy name, in this case, photos. All right, let's run this. So to run this, I'm going to use Vinci Dev. So I'm going to go and add a script for that. You can see that package manager down there now saying that this is a PMPM based module. So when folks install it and use it, it's supposed to be using PMPM. You're going to start to see a lot more of package manager. So if you're not familiar with core pack, I definitely think you should get more familiar with it. Of course, I'll make a video on it at some point. Okay. Now let's run this thing. All right, let's try it out. Okay, we don't have anything on slash. Okay, I get that. But if I go to photos and then I give it the name of a photo, yeah, there we go. We got our static assets. Cool, nice, okay. Okay, but if I go back to like photos in this case, we don't get anything. We don't get a list of all of the files. So if I want to put a React app on this, then I need a, a way to get the list of files on there as well as potentially the image sizes. So that would be really what I'd want. If I'm going to build an app that shows photos, I need a list of all the photos and I can't get access to that. So that's kind of where I need that API at this point. So let's go make that API. So to do that, I'm going to make an API directory and then in that index.ts. And in there, I'm going to bring an event handler from Vinci and I'm going to define my event handler. And this is actually where Nitro fits in the picture. This is actually a Nitro event handler. So what Vinci does is kind of wrap up the combination of Vite and Nitro. And actually, if we go back and look at the Vinci site, you can actually see that they've got a whole bunch of examples here with all kinds of cool configurations. So you got like the, for example, the basic spa, which I think is what I patterned this on. You've got TanStack router now, TanStack, which if you're into React Query and Tanner Lindsley, TanStack router is his full stack version kind of comparison with like a next kind of thing. And it's built on top of Vinci. I think also solid router is built on top of Vinci. So lots of meta frameworks are built on this sort of meta meta framework of Vinci. Okay, let's get back into it. All right, so we got our event handler here. Now we want to configure that with app config. So I'm going to add another route here. This is going to be our API route. It's of a type HTTP. So HTTP says, 
we want to handle any HTTP request to this base endpoint, which would be slash API. And then that's going to call off that API index.ts file. All right, now let's just put something in there. Let's just go iterate through the list of files. So we'll bring in FS. And then we'll look at the incoming request to see is this slash API slash photos. You could also look at the event method. And then let's get the list of files and then return them. Okay, are we running? Yeah, we are running. Let's try it. All right, awesome. Well, we've got .ds store there. That's a Mac thing. You're not going to see that if you're on Windows, but otherwise you've got all these cool JPEG files. So awesome, looking good. We got our API. But ideally, we want to get the image sizes as well. So let's bring in a nice little NPM file for that. Image size. And then I'll bring in image size. And then I'll iterate through all those files, take only ones that end with JPEG, get the width and the height, and then push that into photos. And let's see, I'll return those photos. Have everything. And let's run it. And there we go. So that's all the API that I need for my React app. Now let's go and build a React app. So to do that, I'm going to bring in a bunch of different modules. I'm going to bring in Vinci React. That's the Vinci React adapter for React, as well as the Vite plugin for React, as well as React and React DOM. And because we're in TypeScript, I'll bring in the types for React and React DOM. While I'm here, I might as well give myself a little TS config. Pretty standard TypeScript configuration. Of course, all of this code available to you on GitHub for free. I don't expect you to type that as fast as it goes. You can go in a link in the description right down below and get access to that code. And then I'll bring in React Refresh. And then I'm going to add one more route handler. That is for our client. It's going to be a type of spa. The base point for that is going to be an index.html file that we'll create. The target is going to be the browser. And then we'll bring in that React Refresh plugin. I'm guessing that gives us HMR or Hot Module Reloading. Let's go and create our index.html file. That's just a standard HTML file. We're going to use a script tag, to then bring in our index source. That's a Vite thing. You can do that. You can just create an index HTML, point it at a particular file, and there you go. Pretty cool. So let's create that home index.tsx. We'll bring in React DOM, and then we'll do the standard render into root for hello there. And let, let's see. Let's bring it up. Try it. So now if I go to slash on this, we should get that. <laughs> How cool is that? Okay, awesome. Uh, we want it in dark mode, though, and we want to use Tailwind here. So let's go through all that rigmarole. We'll bring in all the dependencies for Tailwind. We'll do our Tailwind init. I'm creating an index.css file. Again, we'll bring in Tailwind. Then we'll set up our configuration to include the index as well as everything in source. And then let's bring in our index, CSS. And oh, that looks pretty good. Let's make the font size big. Yep, perfect, awesome. We've got Tailwind running, this is great. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is build out our image display component. We'll bring in the usual suspects from React. We'll go and make our request to the server, API photos. Let's go and make ourselves a type of photo. Next, we'll go and create some state for photos as well as use a use effect to go and do a fetch. Apparently that's bad now. Everybody's saying, no, no, ever do that. But well, whatever, it, it works in this case. And let's JSON stringify the results and then add this to our app over here. Okay, cool. Awesome. Now all you really need to do is just actually display them. So. I'm going to add a handy little helper function here called pack. Pack is going to take our array of photos as well as a number of columns and then pack each column with photos, adding on the image to the smallest column as it goes to kind of give us a nice masonry layout. Now let's use a use memo to actually call that pack and we'll give it three columns of layout. Then let's go and format it. So up at the top, we'll have a flex box that wraps. We'll then have one third sized columns. Each one of those columns is going to be a flex box oriented as a column, a little padding. And then we'll just iterate through all those photos. We can put a nice little aspect ratio based on the width and the height. And uh, let's give it a try and see.
And there you go. A cool masonry layout of Mr. Murfison. Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoy building a small project with Vinci with me. I think Vinci is just a fantastic way of adding more into the Vite ecosystem and making it even more friendly to work with and giving you access to really cool stuff like APIs on your Vite application. It opens a lot of doors. I do want to ask if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put those in the comment section right down below. I'm always excited to hear those, and certainly that engagement helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you're into advanced topics like this, I am working on a pro Next.js course. It's just about complete. I've finished my part of it at least. It's really exciting. Go and sign up for the newsletter. That's going to give you access to two free tutorials, one on Next.js state management, which can be a huge pain. It goes through all of that. And another on Next.js forms management, which can also have some issues that you want to work through. So go and check those out. Those are free and you'll get updated on when the course comes out. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you really like it and want to see more like it, and ring on that bell if you want to be notified when new ones come out. I'll see you on the next Blue Collar Coder.